Some people like using more complex clipboard managers, but if all you want to do is just basic manipulation, like copying stuff into your clipboard and things like that, then really there's no reason why you should be using anything besides XClip and Excel. Now there's a reason I'm bundling these two together, and that's because if you've used one, then you've pretty much used the other. They are very, very similar applications. They've got a few tiny differences between the two of them, but pretty much what you're going to be doing with them is going to be the same regardless of which one you're using. So let's just switch over to the main screen and see how to install it first up. So if we just go sudo pacman-s and go x, let's do Excel first. So Excel is just in the package named Excel and Xclip is just in the package named Xclip. So one thing that you probably should keep in mind is that when you're working with your clipboard on X, there are basically, I guess you'd call them three different clipboards. Really only one of them is called your clipboard, but there's, there's basically three clipboards. So you've got your primary, your secondary, and your clipboard. Now, primary is used whenever you highlight something. So if you highlight this text here, it'll be added into your primary clipboard. Secondary, secondary isn't really used by a lot of applications. So if you ever need a dumping ground for things you want to copy stuff into, secondary is generally a pretty safe place to go. And then clipboard is when you actually explicitly say, okay, I've highlighted this, I want to actually copy it. So we can then go and actually paste that here. It's pretty straightforward how they work, but let's just have a look at the man page for Xclip first, and then we'll go into Excel in a couple of minutes, I guess. So I'm not gonna bore you with the man page for too long, but there's a few things of note in here. So we've got the filter option here. Filter will basically, it's a weird name for it. What filter is gonna do is just print out wherever you passed into Xclip. Filter is probably a bad name. It should be set to something like Echo. Don't know why it's filter. The dash R option will strip out the last new line character. So if you use something like PWD and you pipe that into Xclip, basically PWD will put a new line character on the end of that output. But this option here will strip out that new line character. There are other ways to do that by using things like TR and other programs like that. But if you want to do it directly within this application, then you can do that with Xclip. Loops isn't one that I've played with, so I'm not really sure how useful this one would be, but target actually is really useful and we'll get to this one in a bit because this will actually let you store things like images within your clipboard. Uh, display, if you have multiple X servers running for whatever reason, you can set your X server like that. And the other one that we really care about is selection. So selection will actually let you decide which clipboard you wanna work with. So primary, secondary, or the clipboard. So let's go through a few examples. If we just go uh, xclip-o, and we just run it like that. That'll show, I believe, what was in your primary buffer, but let's just try that out a bit. Let's, let's highlight this here. We run that again, and as we can see, yeah, that is printing out from the primary buffer. But you don't have to print out just from primary. You can actually select which one you wanna use. So if we go selection and go clipboard, if I can spell it, there we go. So it's gonna say nothing's in there right now, but if we highlight something in here and we copy it, and then we run this again, as we can see, that thing that I just copied then, it's now in my clipboard. Also, because it's the last thing that I highlighted, it'll also be set within primary. Now, if we run secondary, I don't believe there should even be anything in secondary. And as we can see, there is nothing in secondary right now because Alacrity doesn't use it and most applications don't. I don't know of a single application that actually uses secondary. So yeah, if someone knows of one, let me know because that would actually be interesting to know about. So I was saying before about the dash F option to actually print out whatever you pass in. So let's just test that out. If we just pass the word high into Xclip and you don't have to do the dash I option when you actually are setting your buffer because dash I is the default behavior. But let's just put that into, I don't know, let's go the secondary buffer because we're not really using that for anything else too useful. So if we go Xclip dash O and then go dash selection, secondary, now it'll basically just output that text. So if we try that again, but this time use the dash F option, as we can see, once we've set it, it then pipes out whatever we tried to set it with. So you can do that with other things, as I was saying in the man page, you can do that with something like PWD, that'll then set that to PWD and also echo that out. So if we do that with the dash R option instead, that basically sets it, but without putting in the new line characters. So let's just try that with the clipboard so we can see what that actually does within something like NVim. So we'll set that to clipboard and we'll bring up NVim now. So if we do this without stripping out the new line character, as we can see, it puts in a new line there. 
But if we try that again, but this time actually do strip out the new line character, let's go down to another line, print that. Now it doesn't actually add in a new line when we go to print it. So that might have some uses, but as I was saying before, you can just do that with something like TR, with said, with, there's a method to do that directly within um, POSIX and White Shell as well. So really that option isn't too useful, but if you want to use it for whatever reason, then it is available there for you to use. So you can also do things like redirect files into your clipboards. So if we do something like set my clipboard to, let's just go primary this time and we will redirect in my zshrc file. And if we go xclip dash selection primary and go dash o, that basically just prints out my entire zshrc file. So there isn't a limit on what you can put in your clipboard and this can be a problem. So keep in mind that if you try to put way too much text in your clipboard, it can be a problem from time to time. Some applications may not be able to handle it. So don't do something dumb like put a hundred thousand lines in your clipboard. It might work. I'm not going to say that it is always going to work though and it might cause some serious problems from time to time. So I mentioned before about saving images into your clipboard. So the way you could do something like that is with this right here. So what we're doing right now is we're running the MAME program. MAME is basically a little application to let you take screenshots. So I'm taking a screenshot with a selection basically so that'll let me select a region. I'm piping that into xclip and then what I'm doing here is I'm putting that in my regular clipboard and we're using a new argument this time. We're using the dash t argument. So what dash t lets you do is basically set the target type. Now I know that this works with text and also images. I assume it'll work with JPEGs as well as PNGs. I'm not entirely sure and when it comes to audio files it may work but I'm not entirely sure on that one as well. Sometimes images don't really work. It really depends on how you actually save the image and things like that. So don't always trust this to work. I do know that it does work with MAME though. It might not work with every application that's trying to read from a clipboard though. So if we just run this now and take a screenshot. So nothing's really happened here, but let's bring up something like LibreOffice Writer because that's a good program I can do that I know I can paste an image from. So if we just paste that in here, as we can see, that is just pasted in whatever it was I screenshot of there. Let's try something a bit more obvious as a screenshot. As we can see, that is exactly what we just screenshotted. So once again, it might not work with all sorts of binary data, but it does sometimes, at least with MAME, work with images. I think that's pretty much everything about XClip I wanted to go over. So let's just briefly go over Excel and see what that one can do. So one of the nice things you'll notice straight away is this append option here. So what append lets you do is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of actually overriding whatever is in your clipboard, you can just append to it, which you can do in other ways. So if you're using xclip, you can just save what's in your clipboard and then append to that string and reset it in your clipboard. But once again, these programs are very similar. Everything, I, I'm pretty sure everything you can do with Excel, you can do with xclip. I don't know if there's a way to save binary data with Excel though, so maybe XClip is a bit more useful of an application. Same with this follow option. I believe you can also just do this directly with XClip as well. It just takes a little bit of extra work. But a lot of these options are pretty much the same. We've got a clear option and a delete option. These actually do differ. So clear is like telling a program to die now. So if you do um, kill with signal nine, that basically just says kill the program now. But delete basically will say, uh, it'll request the application to delete the clipboard. So it might take a little bit of time. So that's how they kind of differ. Generally, you're just gonna use clear if you want to use clear, but from time to time, you might wanna let the application handle it itself. We've got our stuff in here for managing the different clipboards. The arguments are a little bit different. We don't do a dash selection and then the name of the clipboard. This time we do dash P for primary, dash S for secondary and dash B for clipboard, not dash C for clipboard. I've done that mistake before. Dash C is actually clear. Keep is one that I didn't talk about before, but I guess we can just briefly mention that for a moment. So when you use the primary and the secondary clipboards, those are actually cleared once the application you're using them for actually closes. So anything you've got selected within your primary clipboard, that'll be cleared once the application closes. Secondary, I'm not too sure on how that's handled because as I said, secondary is not actually used by 
really anything. So if you save stuff into that, I haven't noticed anything disappearing, but when an application closes, just keep in mind the secondary clipboard might get wiped as well, so don't obviously put anything too important in there, but it's probably fine as like a temporary place to store stuff. But this dash keep option here will basically stop that from happening. So if you use this option, it'll make the primary and the secondary selections actually persist. The exchange one is actually also pretty useful. So exchange will basically swap the primary and the secondary selections. Once again, though, you can do all of this with XClip. All you'd do is you would save the primary and the secondary in variables and then just swap them around. That's all you'd have to do for that. Nothing too crazy. So just generally using this is pretty much the same way as you would have used XClip. So if we just wanted to do something like output from the primary selection, all we have to do there is run dash O and dash P. If we want to do something like set the primary buffer to high, all we have to do here is Excel. Uh, we don't have to do the dash I option. Like with XClip, dash I is the default behavior but we'll just set dash P just in case for whatever reason primary isn't set as our primary buffer. If we do that now, we run the previous one again. As we can see, that is now set to high. So as you can see, the basic behavior is pretty much as you would expect it to work. Let's try that, um, the dash X option. So if we run dash X here, nothing looks like it's happened, but if we now try to print out what's in the primary buffer, as we can see, that now shows PWD because that's what I was doing just before. And if we show the secondary buffer, secondary now contains that text we put in there just before. So like with XClip as well, you can do things like uh, pass in program text. So if you want to do something like PWD and then set that to, I don't know, the clipboard. So to dash B and we run that. And if we try to print out dash B this time, as we can see, PWD is now in our clipboard. So that is working pretty much the same way as XClip. As I said before though, there's not really much of a reason for both of these applications to exist. They are pretty much the same thing. I would say XClip is probably a bit better just because you can store binary data within your clipboard like that. I don't think there's a way to do it with Excel. At least I haven't noticed a way to do it. So if we just have another brief look in here, it doesn't look like there's a way to do it. No, by the looks of it, I don't think you can, which is a little bit annoying, but I guess it's not a big deal really. So at this point you might be thinking, okay, well, what exactly is the point of all of that? And I would say the most obvious use is the MAME example I gave, where you could take a screenshot of a portion of your screen and then just paste that into like LibreOffice Writer, whatever the presentation one is called, or things like GIMP. Now, I don't typically do a lot of clipboard manipulation, so I don't really have a, I guess, a good example off the top of my head, but I would say that is probably the most obvious use. I guarantee someone in the comments is gonna come up with some really weird use case, and that'll probably be pretty cool, but for me, I'm just gonna let you guys know about these tools, and if someone can come up with something weird to do with it, then hey, that's actually pretty cool. So, I know some people use more complex clipboard managers that have things like history and various other cool things like that. But I come from using Windows, so on Windows, if you copy something, then it's going to eliminate your clipboard. So for me, I don't treat the clipboard as anything more than just a place where you copy and paste stuff from. But as I said, if you want a clipboard history, go check out one of those more complex applications out. I might do a video on one of them if someone thinks that's actually pretty useful. And maybe, I don't know, it might turn out that I think it's useful as well and just realize that I've just been wasting tons of time and should have used one of those applications this entire time. I don't expect that to happen, but it's entirely possible, I would say. So before I end the video, I'd like to thank a few people. So I want to thank my patrons, Andrew, Road, LQ, Larry, and Zilver, because they help make this channel possible. So if you want to support the channel or you just want to have your name read out at the end of a the video, there'll be a link to that down below. I've also got my social links, so my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff, and my alternate video platforms, so my BitTube and my library. I've also got my Amazon affiliate links down below, so go check those out if you want to buy any of the gear I use. Remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below, and also remember to comment and leave a like. So I think that's everything for me, and I'm out.